Hi guys and welcome to this week's Money Honeys video. Today we are continuing on with talking about fully saving for retirement. I will say, as I say in every video, if you are watching one of my Money Honeys videos for the first time, welcome, thank you so much for joining me. And what I would maybe suggest, feel free to watch this video all the way through, but if you really want to understand all the context of what it is that we are doing and what we are talking about, I would encourage you to go back to the start of these videos. They are all on one playlist and watch from there. So I will include a card up above so that you can click and go now, or I will put a link uh, in the description bar down below so that you can go back to the first video and watch through from there. Uh, so as I was saying, this week we are going to be talking about retirement savings. So in the last video that I did, we talked about how much, what percentage of your income you want to be putting into retirement, how you figure out how much you should be saving each month towards retirement. Uh, what I am doing this week is talking a little bit about where you can put those funds that you are saving towards retirement. And what I'm going to do just at the very outset here is put a big disclaimer that I am telling you what I know, um, but I am in no way any kind of a financial expert. Um, so use this information, do some research yourself, go and talk to people who are actual financial experts and get their advice on what you should do. What I want this video to do is just give you a little bit of knowledge. I find there's a lot of confusion out there about different ways of saving, different saving vehicles or buckets, if you want to call it that. Um, and sometimes it can just seem so overwhelming to go in and even start a conversation because you feel like they're throwing all kinds of terms at you that you don't know and you're starting from a disadvantage. So what I want to do is share a little bit of knowledge with the disclaimer that I am not an expert to maybe get you a little bit more comfortable with thinking about the different ways of saving for retirement. I am also going to provide the disclaimer that I am Canadian. So most of my knowledge is about Canadian saving methods or vehicles. Um, but there are similar things in the US and I've done a little bit of research to try to let you know what the equivalents are in the US, but once again, go and do your own research, talk to people who are actual experts. Uh, just this video is here for a little bit of introductory knowledge. So there are different ways of saving for retirement. And I am going to talk about three broad areas. And let me just lay those out to start with. Um, you can save for retirement uh, in a way that is not in any kind of registered retirement plan. There's no tax incentives or anything there. I mean, if you want it to, you could just get money from your paycheck and put it into a savings account, put it into buying stocks, buying bonds, buying mutual funds, um, guaranteed investment certificates, things like that, uh, and not take advantage of any kind of retirement plan. That is the first one, and we will talk about that more in a moment. The second way that you can save is by using a method here in Canada that we refer to as RRSPs. That is a registered retirement savings plan, and what that does is it provides you with some immediate tax sheltering of the funds that you are putting into an RRSP. And then within your RRSP, you can again have a savings account, stocks and bonds, mutual funds, investment certificates, all those kinds of things within your RRSP. The third type is here in Canada, what is called a TFSA, a tax-free savings account. In that one, you do not get the immediate tax savings right away, but your money grows in there tax-free, and then you can use it when you get to retirement. Um, so those are the three broad buckets. And again, in that TFSA, you can have just a savings account, you can have stocks and bonds, you can have mutual funds, you can have guaranteed investment certificates, all of that can be within your TFSA bucket. Uh, so for those of you in the States, the first discussion here is going to be similar to what you can do. Uh, those things that are outside of any kind of savings, retirement, registered savings plan. The second one, what we in Canada call an RRSP, I believe is similar to your 401ks. And then our tax-free savings accounts, I believe are similar to your Roth IRAs. 
So I kind of threw that at you all at once. Let's rewind a little bit here and we will talk about each one of these in detail and I will give you an example of each or talk you through a little bit of the numbers. Let's start by talking about the first very straightforward way that you can save for retirement. And basically in this way, you're going to be ignoring any kind of retirement plan or tax savings, any kind of thing like that. Basically, you are going to get paid from work. And as we discussed in previous videos, there is your gross pay, which is the overall amount. But then a chunk of that goes towards taxes as well as some other deductions. And then you get the net pay into your actual bank account. So how much is taken off in taxes there depends on a number of different factors, including your income level. So let us say as an example throughout this video that you make $100,000 a year and you are taxed at 25%. I'm just using big round numbers to make this easy. So your gross pay is $100,000. So each year you make $100,000, but really $25,000, which is 25%, is taken off and goes to the government, and then $75,000 ends up in your actual bank account. I know this is incredibly simplified, but we'll use it for the purpose of this discussion. With the $75,000 that you now have in your bank account, you're doing all your regular spending, that kind of thing, you can take a percentage of that, let's say 10%, $7,500, and you can choose to do something with it to save for retirement. You can put it into a savings account, which you might get a few percentage of um, interest on throughout, you know, throughout the year. You can put it into the stock market and buy stocks. You can put it into mutual funds with your bank. You can put it into GICs, which is something we have here in Canada. It's a guaranteed investment certificate. It basically means you don't get a huge amount of interest. You get a little bit more than a savings account, um, but it's guaranteed you're not going to have any loss on it. These are all things that you can do to save. And with all of these things, any growth that you get on your money will be taxed by the government. They just get their share of everything. So at the end of the year, when you're claiming your taxes, you will get you know different information from your bank, from whoever you go through about how much of the growth on your investments, on your savings that you have is being taxed, and then you pay a tax on that. So basically you get paid and you get taxes taken off, as your money grows, the growth on your money is taxed. Um, and then when you get to retirement, you can just spend that money. It's already been taxed um, when you initially made it. It's been taxed as it's grown all these years. And then you just spend it when you get to retirement, however much you have built up over all this time, and you spend it. Uh, and that is the most simplified way of savings. You don't get any kind of um, you know, tax benefits or anything, but it's just that straightforward. The second way that we are going to talk about is in basically what is called a tax deferred bucket. Uh, again, here in Canada, those are called RRSPs. And here in Canada, basically, the amount that you can put into RRSPs is based again on your income level. So there is a certain amount each year that is given to you as an amount you can put into RRSPs. You can figure this out on your taxes and all that kind of thing. Uh, and if you don't put anything into it, that amount stays there so that the next year your RRSP amount is higher and it just kind of goes from there. Now, in our example, here, if you decide to put money into RRSPs, you have your gross income of $100,000. It then gets taxed and $25,000 goes away to the government in taxes so that you have $75,000 left in your account. If you then take 10%, because we were talking in our last video about 10%, um, so $7,500 and put it into a bucket RRSP. I'm calling it a bucket because an RRSP itself is not a savings account. You know, uh, within your RRSP, 
you can have savings accounts, you can have stocks, you can have mutual funds, you can have GICs. So when you are choosing how to do your RRSPs, there's a lot of different options that you can choose. But overall, you take that $7,500 and you put it into some combination of different kinds of savings within the RRSP bucket. What then happens when you go to do your taxes at the end of the year is you tell the government that you put $7,500 into RRSP funds and they then look at that and give you back the amount of taxes that you initially gave them for that $7,500. Basically what you're doing is instead of saying that you made $100,000 that is being taxed at 25%, by putting money into an RRSP, it reduces your gross income by that amount. So the government instead looks at it like you made 92,500 and you get that amount of taxes that you paid on the $7,500 back again. So in our example here, because you are in a 25% tax bracket and you put $7,500 into RRSP savings, you would end up getting back at the end of the year $1,875, which is 25% of $7,500. What then happens is you have retirement savings within an RRSP and those grow and those actually grow without you having to pay any taxes on it. So it's almost like it's in a little bubble where it is growing unto itself for your RRSPs. However, when you get to retirement, say you've saved up half a million dollars in your RRSP bubble or bucket, when you get to retirement and that money starts getting paid back out to you, you get taxed on it as if it is your income. So whatever your tax rate is when you are in retirement, you are then paying as you take money out of the RRSP. So it's almost like you took money, shield it from paying taxes, let it grow, and then you're paying taxes on it at retirement. For the third kind of retirement saving bucket or bubble that we have, it is here in Canada called a tax-free savings account. And this is something that is relatively new to us. Here in Canada, TFSA's tax-free savings accounts were initially introduced in 2009. And initially there was a limit set that each Canadian uh, over the age of 18, I believe, no matter what your income or anything like that, can put $5,000 each year into a TFSA. That amount increased over time. Uh, in 2013, it went up to 5,500. And for one year in 2015, it went up to 10,000 and then came back to 5,500. Uh, but each year it builds. And if you have never put any money into a TFSA, it has added up in all that time. You don't lose it if you don't put money in for that year. Um, basically at this point in 2017, if you have never put money into a TFSA and you have been over 18 since it started, you have enough space to put in $52,000 of retirement savings funds into a TFSA. So here is the way that a TFSA works. Basically, again, let's say you have your gross income of $100,000, you are taxed at 25%, so $25,000 goes to the government, and into your bank account you get $75,000. Uh, from that, depending on how much space you have in your TFSA, let's say 5,500 for the sake of this, uh, you take 5,500 out of your 75,000 and you put it into something within a TFSA. Again, a TFSA is a bucket. Within a TFSA, you can have savings accounts, stocks and bonds, mutual funds, GICs, all kinds of things within there. That then grows tax-free you don't get any initial tax savings. You get nothing back on your taxes the year that you put money into a TFSA, but you're putting it into a nice little tax-free bubble where it grows over time. And the growth on those investments within your TFSA are not taxed annually by the government. 
when it gets to retirement for you, you already paid tax on that initial money that was put into your TFSA. So basically you have this account that has grown all this time and you can take money out of it without paying any taxes on it. It's a very powerful kind of savings vehicle in that way because you paid the tax already at the beginning, it grows and grows and grows, and then you have that money available to you, not even at retirement. You actually can use a TFSA anytime, whereas an RRSP, there are certain limits and penalties if you choose to use it before you are actually at retirement age. All of those kinds of things are too technical for me about the penalties and when you get it and all that kind of thing. I'm just trying to give you broad strokes here. So basically the difference between the three different ways that you can save for retirement or the tr three different buckets that are available for you for retirement um, are do you get any initial tax savings the year that you put money into it? You do if it's an RRSP. Uh, you do not if you are just straight up saving or using a TFSA. Uh, is the growth on your investments taxed? and it is not if it's in a TFSA or if it is in a RRSP, but it is if it's just in a savings or investment account outside of a retirement vehicle. And then finally, are you taxed on those funds when you get to retirement? And with an RRSP, you are. You are taxed on those funds as they become income and move into your um, cash flow stream in retirement. One of the main reasons that I talk about these as buckets uh, or bubbles, whatever that is. Basically, they are containers. It's like there is a RRSP bucket and you can put all kinds of different accounts and things within it. There's a TFSA bucket and you can put all kinds of things within it. Um, and the reason I describe it that way is a lot of people get confused about what a TFSA is. They think, I need to go to the bank and put money into a TFSA. And how do I get a TFSA? TFSA. How do I get a tax-free savings account? As if it was a specific kind of account. Um, and I think in a lot of cases, banks kind of take advantage of that because they advertise to you this TFSA account you can get. And really what I want you to understand is for both RRSPs and for TFSAs, they are buckets that can hold all kinds of other investments. And it's good for you to talk to a person who is a financial expert about what the advantages are of having different kinds of investments and accounts within those different buckets because there are advantages and strategies for each. Very broadly, I want to say there is a lot of discussion about where is the best place to save? And I will say this, saving with an RSP or a TFSA, in my opinion, is always preferable to saving outside of them for retirement savings. The reason people end up saving outside of those is if they've maxed them out because there is a maximum amount that you can put into an RSP that is based off of your income and there is a maximum amount that any of us can put into a TFSA based on what the limit is that year. So once you have maxed out both those kinds of investment vehicles, then you end up saving outside of it for retirement. But in my opinion, you should always max out those two first. So then you're looking between those two, if you haven't done a lot of retirement savings and you have space left in both, to say, which one should I use? And I'm not going to tell you which one you should use because again I think you should have these conversations with somebody who is a lot more advanced at this than I am but there are a few things to consider. It is generally good to put funds into an RRSP when you have a income where you are at a high tax bracket because you get more money back because you're being taxed at a higher tax bracket when you put money into an RRSP. However, you also need to consider what you think your uh, income is going to be in retirement. If you are somebody with an excellent pension plan where you know you are going to have good money coming in in retirement, an RSP is going to be taxed pretty highly at that point. Um, basically, an RSP is at its most advantageous when you are making a high amount of income, so you are in a high tax bracket when you are investing into it, and you predict you may be at a lower tax bracket when you are in retirement. 
The other advantage of an RRSP is that you do get money back on your taxes. So if you have other financial priorities, maybe you're trying to um, pay off your house, maybe you're saving up for something, you can kind of do two things. You can put that money into retirement in an RRSP and be saving for retirement. And then when you get the money back at the end of the year from your taxes, because you put money into an RRSP, you can use that towards whatever your current financial goal is. And it kind of gives you a nice blend of things to be able to do. A tax-free savings account might be the best thing to put your money into if you are maybe younger and starting out in your career. So you're not making a lot of money, you are not in a high tax bracket, you want to save for retirement, but maybe you want to let some of that RRSP room build up because you project in your career that you are going to be moving into a higher tax bracket and then you can be putting money into the RRSP when there is an opportunity for you to get the most tax break for it. Basically, I would encourage you to do your research, read about all these different uh, avenues for savings, but I just wanted to give you a quick breakdown of what these different savings vehicles are so that you at least have a little bit of a basis and they're not maybe so intimidating when you go to decide um, what you want to go to your financial advisor or your bank and talk to them about. Uh, I hope this was useful for you. If you enjoyed this, please consider giving me a thumbs up. It lets me know you're watching and enjoying. Uh, if you have not subscribed and would like to do so, please consider doing so. I have hit over 200 subscribers, which is crazy to me. I have so much fun doing these videos and doing my product review videos, and it just makes me so incredibly happy and thankful that people are watching and subscribing. It's just, it's awesome. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment area down below. I always respond to every comment. And also just leave me a comment and say hi. I mean, I feel like you watch my videos and I would love to get to know you more. Once again, thank you so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!